These are the scale sizes of the Earth and Moon. The radius of the Moon is 3.7 times less than that of the Earth. Its mass 81 less. If we observe the translational motion of the Moon from the north side of the solar system, the Moon rotates counterclockwise around the Earth. For each complete revolution of the Moon around the Earth, the Earth has rotated on itself more than 27 times. The Moon takes to go 360 degrees around its orbit 27 days, 7 hours and 43 minutes. This cycle is called the sidereal month. If we starting a movement in which the Sun, Moon and Earth are aligned, we consider a complete cycle of the phases of the Moon when once started the movement, the three bodies retake its start position. If not displace Earth in its orbit around the Sun, the sidereal month and the phases coincide. But while the Moon orbits the Earth, the Earth also orbits the Sun giving rise to the moon scroll 360 degrees before the three bodies being realigned. The moon must travel more than 360 degrees so that the three bodies line up again and so fulfill the cycle of the phases of the moon. This cycle is called the synodic month, equivalent to 29 days, 12 hours and 44 minutes. The ecliptic and the lunar orbit are not in the same plane. The mean inclination of the lunar orbit to the ecliptic plane is 5.1 degrees. The nodes are points at which the moon's orbit crosses the ecliptic. Nodes have represented as blue dots. The line of nodes, the intersection between the two respective planes, has a retrograde motion, for an observer on Earth that rotates westward along the ecliptic with a period of 18.60 years, or 19.3549 degrees per year. Lunar and solar eclipses can occur when the nodes align with the Sun, roughly every 173.3 days. The eclipse occurs when the Moon falls on a node aligned between Earth and Sun. In any other position of the nodes eclipses will not occur. Because the Moon would never be aligned between the Sun and the Earth, even though the Moon is in the middle of both bodies, as the Moon does not coincide with the plane of the ecliptic. The translational and rotational periods of the Moon are the same. Moon therefore always offers the same hemisphere to an observer on Earth. This hemisphere is called the near side of the Moon. The opposite hemisphere will always be hidden to an observer on Earth. It is called the far side of the Moon. The far side of the Moon was first perceived by humans through the Soviet probe Luna 3. The Soviet spacecraft photographed the far side of the Moon on October 7, 1959. Five decades later, we know in detail the map of the far side of the Moon through the GRAIL mission by NASA. We will observe a complete cycle of the phases of the Moon. We will stand as an observer at the North Pole of the Earth. Let's start it in his new Moon, where the Moon is aligned between the Sun and Earth. In this phase all the far side of the Moon is illuminated by the Sun. His face visible remains in shadow. Is this the reason why we cannot see the moon during this phase? To which is added that the sun rays themselves hinder to the visibility. In this phase, the moon is absent overnight. In the new moon phase may occur solar eclipses. But the likelihood of that happening is small due to the large distances between the bodies, and especially because the Moon-Earth plane is inclined to the Earth-Sun plane. Begins the first quarter, during which the Moon is growing. If we observe the crescent from the North Pole, the Moon takes the form of D. 
However, if we go to the South Pole, the moon takes the form of C. If at that moment one views it from the line of Ecuador at the night, the moon will appear to us in the form of U. Between 14th and 15th day, the full moon appears. The sun illuminates the whole near face of the moon. From the south pole we'll see a full moon reversed from how we've seen from the north pole. The sea of tranquility and all other seas, are presented flipped 180 degrees. At the midnight in equator, the full moon will be located at the zenith. If the observer looks up and turns upon himself may see the moon in any position. During the full moon the earth is between the sun and the moon. If the right conditions are met can occur lunar eclipse. This phenomenon occurs when the shadow of the earth darkens the surface of the moon. This eclipse can last several hours. During the third quarter the moon begins to wane. View from the North Pole, the waning moon will take form of C. Viewed from South Pole it will take the form of a D. At the night from Equator, the waning moon is seen in the form of U. From the Northern Hemisphere, the waning moon will take a form between C and U. The trend one form or another will depend on the latitude and time of year in which we find ourselves. At a latitude between 40 and 50 degrees north, the waning moon will take the following form seen in the night by an observer who is between these latitudes. These are latitudes corresponding to most of the European countries, Northern United States, North Korea and Northern Japan. In the southern hemisphere at a latitude of between 10 to 30 degrees we see this other waning moon. This latitude corresponds to much of the South American countries, countries in southern Africa, and northern and central Australia. The shape of the waning moon is between a D and a U, with a tendency toward a U, because we are not far from Ecuador. Ended our journey in the last quarter waning. End the cycle giving weight to the new moon again. For ease of explanation, we have considered so far circular lunar orbit. But the orbit of the Moon is distinctly elliptical with an average eccentricity, where the Earth is not located in the center, such that there is distance at apogee approximately to 407,000 km. And distance at perigee equivalent to 357,000 km. So far we have not considered the true scale of the distance separating the Earth from the Moon. Scale distance between Earth and the Moon is the following.